Good morning, everyone. As introduced, my name is uh, Ji Won Chong. It is my great pleasure to share this time with you. Today's weather is a little bit chilly, so I'm really happy to have a, such a big turnout today. Actually, this ICH training session has been started from 2018, and it has held ha, has been held every year. And every year, we do have some updates on the uh, ICH guidelines uh, training. So, for the very first 30 minute of the training session, we always share what has been done as to ICH guideline development and implementation in Korea. So, how many people have participated last year's? Uh, ICH guideline training. How many? Uh, not really that many attendees participated in last year's training session. So I will uh, deliberate what has been done for the ICH guideline implementation in Korea. This is the agenda for my presentation. I will focus mainly on number three and four, which includes ICH EWG and MFDS implementation activities. So if you look at what ICH is about, as you know, the ICH is an organization for harmonized initiative for the regulators in the pharmaceutical industry. It is very active, a international organization along with the WHO, and actually its impact or the influence at the global level is really, really big. And as you can see from the slide, the purpose of ICH is to promote the harmonization activities. And why we are trying to achieve harmonization? Because we want to uh, maximize the efficiency and effectiveness. And the measures to do it is developing technical guidelines and in and the ICH member countries implement those guidelines. If you look at the organization of the ICH, you can see the assembly at the center. This is the largest gathering of the ICH member countries. Um, there are two times of the assembly gathering a year, and at the assembly, the management committee and working groups are uh, active. Um, in terms of the management committee, it is actually managing the ICH. So some member countries are participating in this uh, ICHMC or the management committee, and Korea is one of them. And there is ICH expert working group. And actually, this is really important a tech, uh, group to develop technical guidelines. So they are doing the actual work of the ICH guidelines. And Korea is involved in many different experts uh, working groups. And I will uh, deliberate more on later on. So if you look at the ICH members, we do have uh, 21, actually 22 member countries. And also uh, the ICH has uh, 36 uh, observers. And as you can see here, there are regulatory members, but at the same time, there is industry members. And here, the founding members include uh, the US, Japan, and EU. They were the founding members, but there are also Swiss and Canada. Switzerland and the Canada were the standing members. And there was a reformation activity to expand the members. And afterwards, there were more addition of the members. So until last year, there were 12 members. And Korea, the MFDS, is one of the regulatory members. At the end of the last year, or early this year, Egypt joined as a new member. So now the regulatory member uh, amounts to 13 regulatory bodies. And also the uh, pharmaceutical related associations and uh, bio and IGBA of different countries are serving as the industry members. And when it comes to the observers, they do not have the right to make decisions. However, they do provide their opinions and feedbacks. So to have the regulatory harmonization, the observing countries are also very active. Nigeria's NAFTA recently joined as one of the observers. I briefly mentioned the management uh, committee or the MC. The MC is actually uh, serving as a key role, performing the key role to operate ICH. 
as an organization. And the ICH guidelines, once they are developed, then those guidelines need to be adopted or not. That decision needs to be made at the management committee. So the founding members and the standing members, the total of five countries or the five members were very active in the uh, management committee. However, uh, it, after the reformation initiative in 26, uh, 2015, there were uh, the up members added and Korea became a part of the uh, management committee. Uh, also the Brazil and China are the members of the MC. And these management committee members the regulatory members here are elected. So we at the MFDS was re-elected. So for the coming years, the uh, Korea will stay and remain active as the one of the members of the ICHMC. Then what about the milestones for the MFDS participation in ICH? I remember that back in 2007 or 2000, early 2000, we do have the AHC. So we participate as in uh, the AHC as a part of the ICH. And after the reformation, we became the regulatory member, as I explained before. So becoming the member of the management committee, or to be more precise, being elected as the member of the management committee was in 2018 and last year and this year and actually there was a re-election in 2021 so we remain as an active member of the ICH management committee so far and last year you may remember that we had the very first ICH assembly for the first time for Korea to hold uh, the ICH assembly in Songdo. So ICH members visited Songdo and we had ICH training session likewise. Uh, although this year we have two days of the training uh, session, but last year there was four days. EWG members were invited to the ICH training and the head of the EWG were ser uh, serving as the lecturers for this training. So last year was very significant for the uh, MFDS. And if I summarize what has been decided at the last year's assembly, you remember that that was right after like the pandemic and the uh, hybrid was the type of the meeting in the past during the pandemic area but last year was the very first face-to-face -face meeting after the pandemic so ICH uh, discussed a lot of topics including MEDRA and management committee and that was really good and at the time we had 20 members and 36 observers and these five guidelines were determined at that last year's ICH assembly. As you can see here, the Q13 was adopted so it moved to the step 4 so it became a former guideline of the ICH and E19 to S1B uh, that were like step 2 or step 4. That was the decisions made last year's ICH assembly. And I, this is how the ICH guidelines are adopted. You can see the different steps and you can uh, see this information in this ICH website. E EWG is the where we can provide an input and once it is fixed or they are determined, then it will go to the step four and five. Usually adoption is occurring at the step four and the regulatory bodies different in different countries decide whether they will adopt it or not for their uh, local regulation. So the management committee was involved in the beginning, meaning that whether this topic can be a part of or can be developed into the new guidelines or the revision of the guidelines or not. And then the expert working group became active to have a lot of different meetings to develop guidelines. And 
MFDS is a part of the 19 EWGs. We do have the teleconference every other week in order to discuss together. It's a quite an intensive discussion. And if the uh, EWG members are uh, arrived at the uh, agreement, then uh, the body will decide whether to uh, adopt it or not. This is the website of the ICH, so you can refer to the guidelines here, and you can see the different topic areas for the guideline. And next is the EWG activities. So we have around 700, more than 700 experts. We counted them one by one, and we found that there were around 700 experts working around the world, and we have more than 30 working groups. And as you can see, most of them are founding or standing members. And our members are also quite actively participating. As for the MFDS, it participates in 19 expert working groups, as I mentioned earlier. And beginning this year, we are beginning a new Q1A, Q5C stability guideline series, which is already undergoing revisions. So meetings have been convened since last year because the EWG was formed last year, and we'll be working on this very hard beginning 2023. And the target is to make it step two by June 2025. It's probably going to be most impactful, including all of the um, reviewers and the drug developers. And then Q2 and Q14, will be around validation of analytical procedure, analytical procedure development, which will be the topics of other presentations today. It, the plan was to go through this within this year, but it's not going up as fast as we expected, but still there is steady improvement. And then Q3C, impurities, very important guideline in terms of chemical compounds. So the guidelines have already been adopted, and currently they're looking at maintenance, which would include revising the vocabulary and correcting typos and whatnot. And Q3C would comes next, and Q3E, impurities assessment and control of extractables and leachables. This is one of the important uh, guidelines. And it has to be uh, speeded up in terms of its development. So extractables and leachables guidelines are already underway. And so this will be also very helpful for uh, drug developers and reviewers at the authorities. There's a lot of harmonization that has not yet taken place. And most of it is mostly based on USP. And so it will take a little while. And Q12, Q13 training material is being developed, and then it's 1B, carcinogenicity is going to go into step 5. And then we have E21, inclusion of pregnant and breastfeeding individuals in clinical trials. So this has been included as a pre-step this year. This, there's always been much talk about this area, so this is also an area uh, where you should probably pay attention. And then M8 ECTD, it was already adopted, but there will be vocabulary maintenance. So there won't be significant changes to the content, but there will be some perhaps language changes. So we're looking at a total of 19 that are underway. And there has been a lot that has been added in EWGs and then pulled out of EWGs. And I found that MFDS has pulled out of four EWG, including M12 and E20, those that are almost facing the end of adoption and only, uh, only waiting for administrative work. Those are areas where we have, um, we're still involved in. Now I would like to share with you MFDS's implementation activity. 
because we're a regulatory member and also a management committee member, most of the guidelines are already implemented in Korea. Some of them are already notified, and some of them are introduced as individual guidelines. So I did a recount before October, and I found that 115 of the guidelines are already implemented in Korea in whichever form. And as of now, 2022 and 23, about five guidelines have been newly implemented in the past year and this year. And last year, I believe at this very same training, we shared that implementation has gone up to S11 and then E2F since then and M7, assessment and control of DNA reactive impurities have also been updated and implemented. In terms of ICH quality guidelines, three guidelines on Q quality by design have been translated into Korean and uploaded onto our website so anyone can download them if you need. This hasn't yet been incorporated into our official public uh, notifications. However, Q13 discussion still requires some dis um, discussion. And S1B, this was introduced last year but implementation is probably going to be complete sometime soon. And because gene therapies are being developed actively, the biodistribution guidelines are required. However, the relevant uh, units are still only discussing them instead of fully implementing them. And in terms of efficacy, this includes E9. So my own uh, division is in charge of E9. There's no amendments to be made by made to E9. R1 has been added, and E9 R1 is statistical guidelines. We are adjusting the content along with experts and currently establishing guidelines to have them implemented. So we believe that implementation will be complete by December this year. And next, we have QT intervals, and then E8 and E19. There are, E8 is in R1. It has just begun very recently. So E8 has been implemented into our notifications, but R1 has just begun. And as for multidisciplinary, ECTD and M10 are in the process of implementation. And as for ECTD, at MFDS, we have a consultative body which is actively at work. We're expecting it to be implemented shortly. Next, as I mentioned earlier, So this is the status of updates since last year's presentation. And as you can see from number one through number eight, these eight guidelines are currently looking forward to implementation. So by the end of this year or by the end of next year and by 2025, we are working hard to have them implemented. And for the remaining three, 9, 10, and 11, they haven't yet been implemented, and we're expecting them to be implemented by about 2024. However, there are a lot of changes taking place in the guidelines themselves, so there might be some change to the timeline. So the top eight that are stated as in process were probably going to be implemented by the deadlines that are on the far right column. However, the remaining three, 9, 10, and 11, their implementation time might be adjusted. And we will be providing updates on this on the yearly, in the yearly ICH guideline training. So you might refer to that. And the ICH guidelines are translated into Korean. And we have within NIFDS website a page 
that provides Korean and English language ICH guidelines, so you might check them when you need. So the update status and uh, Korea's involvement in EWGs, all of this is openly disclosed on our website. So please let us know if you need any additional information or if you want to provide any comments. So I think that's the most of my presentation. And around the end of this month and early next month, November, right, the uh, assembly for the latter half of this year will be hosted in Praha, Czech. So EWG, MC, and uh, we're going to, MFDS is going to participate in those meetings. And if you have any comments or any requests to make of us for our participation in that meeting, in those meetings, please let us know and so we can relay them when we're there. So to summarize, through ICH guidelines, MFDS is enhancing for, uh, is trying to contribute to international harmonization, but at the same time, MFDS is trying to enhance our guideline and uh, review uh, levels up to global standard. And I would like to stress here that feedback is very important. We're having training sessions today, and to put together this training program, we talked with a lot of experts. We have a program committee that puts together this agenda. And we put in a lot of effort to put together the most relevant training content. If you don't have any, any feedback, then it's hard to know what's going to be most relevant and meaningful for our participants. So through Cobia website or in the questionnaire afterwards, we are really open and we really welcome and look forward to your comments and feedback on this program. It will be very helpful indeed for us to make this program even more relevant. And as the MC said, we'll be talking about quality and multidisciplinarity and tomorrow we'll be talking about uh, safety and efficacy. So tomorrow we will have the overseas speakers in person and I encourage you to ask a lot of questions. Thank you so much for your attention.